I'm on my way now to SM City Cebu again for the third time to pay the taxes and I hope they can accommodate me this time to pay the taxes otherwise I'll be going back again because I want to avail of the tax amnesty that for the year 2020 there's no penalties for non-payment of the past months because of the COVID but it's only until the September 30 I have already briefed my lads about what they're gonna do today and what I expected to see when I got home and what are my other requirements of the dowels ready for horizontal filing and then the two inch pipe on the bottom for drainage of that little England place of Old B. As usual, Old B is in his beauty sleep while well, I'm up at six o'clock in the morning ready to go so I usually talk about stuff when I'm driving into somewhere what I want to talk today is about my life story I had a few emails interested about how me and old B met and what are the process that we have to go through um, have I lived in England have I done this but first, I'd like to start about my life story because I also have a few emails before asking me different stuff about my life but I'm just not ready because the, the channel was just so young before as well and like I said, my channel is not about myself but now I get, um, I get acquainted with some of my subscribers, my regular subscribers so I'd like to share my love my life story um, like I always said I grow up here in Cebu City I was born in Cebu City but I grow up in one of those um, hardcore urban settling areas aka squatters so life for me is not privilege it's very hard at the I am the middle of I got two older brothers and two younger sisters so both the brothers is like one year apart then they're five years old before I come along and then I'm five years old because before the two sisters come along and they're just one year apart so I'm in the middle five years in between I could remember at the age of five I was already aware that I am actually living a hard life by the fact that I could feel hunger all the time you know at five years old you get lured to the nice food of the other neighbors and here you are eating almost two meals a day and also I have to queue up to watch television in black and white in our neighbor's house the reason that we have to queue up because she will smell us one by one because if you stink she won't let you in and you're only allowed to watch the programs that she want to watch but fortunately at that time there's only a few programs available in the television so it's always like the Charles Angels like all these things that she likes but as a young girl you know that you just want to watch a TV and we don't have a television so after dinner we have to queue up and be discriminated like that and one day I could remember that I told my father that why do you have so many kids and you can afford you can't afford feed us can't afford to buy a TV can't afford to have a nicer house I could remember I had a good slapping at that one because you know my parents they are the old school what I mean is they believe that beating is a way of disciplining the children I could remember that we get beaten by my mother started with a bamboo branch you know the kaginking then the then she upgraded to one by one wood or any two by two wood whatever she can 
get her hands on and then the biatch was upgrading to when we were teenager upgrading to a stingray tail and that's when i i avoid to annoy her that's that's really scary to me because even if you're far it, it still can reach you i still got all those scars on my legs with all the beating that they have to inflict on us whenever they want to discipline us so at that time that i said to my dad why do you have a lot of children if you can't afford to feed them and she she he just slapped me left right left and right left and right said you're just a child you don't have the right to talk to me like that and so at that time at five years old i said to myself i cannot be living the same life this way again i could do better there's something i could do better than this and so next time i know i was taken to take a test or something but i already determined to change the course of my life by working hard i want to achieve an education so i'm diligently learning my abc's my english words writing and all that so when i took this test i passed so i was so happy that i passed all the while it was for a nun school that they sent me off you know so among my siblings i'm the only one that went straight on to nun school because my brothers was there before but they only allow boys kindergartens you know kindergarten grade and that's it and the rest is just girls so i was sent off to a nun school i came out there about i'm 12 years old but that is the best thing that they ever done for me because that's where i learned how to speak english that's where i learned how to do manners how to do because we always have this good manners and right conducts good ethics thing that were even the cutleries how to use it properly how to sit down properly but again you are installed with too much religious effects like you have to go to church every day pray every day because our teachers are nuns so i don't know what kind of nuns because they are also like my mother they have a stick that they carry around so when you start speaking the vernacular you can hear on the side of you they're not hitting you they're just trying to intimidate you and imagine that growing up you get immune to it bangs and shouting don't even intimidate me because you just grow up with it and so hang on because this motorbike we're gonna go on this side let's go ahead of him and that's how I grow up with so the nun school closed when the founder died and I was about 12 years old at the time so I had to get this another scholarship and I was sent to a public school this public school is a big public school in the city where a lot of the urban settler children is there so you can see the environment on it the bullying and all that so it was just like a shock to me but it didn't take me long to be the leader of those bullies by starting with arguing with the teacher in English and so my teacher don't want me to attend the class until I have my parents I told her my parents already died and that was I was 13 first year high school I said I'm an orphan I'm living with my aunt and my aunt is er elderly see you just learn to lie because that's the environment white lies to protect yourself the environment I grow up with I grow up in an urban settling community 
where a lot of children are rough and you learn to be rough and but I know deep inside me I want a better life than this I can't live in this community like this forever because some of my co childhood friends are just accepting that they are just gonna be poor no I'm not even thinking about um, my only way to get out of poverty is to marry a foreigner that's out of my mind I don't even have time for any boyfriend girlfriend relationship no I don't have no time I want to study so on my high school I studied hard I work I'm a working student you know that's how the way we ex we call that before you work in the morning and you go to school at night and luckily I was able to do that until I was college then I got a good job after college I get out of my working student where I am working as a clerk going on offices submitting all the paperwork because the firm that I'm working with that allows me to go to school at night um, my job is to go to the bank set like doing their paperwork submitting this doing this you know like the liaison officer and that's how I learn about how can you bribe them because I'll give this to so-and-so the red envelopes and you just absorb all that and so I landed on my first proper job on the factory I have out of the 200 applicants I have managed to be one of the 50 but they're only taking 10 to take to Japan to learn to sew and out of the 50 so after the 50 I was still there out of the 25 and then the final exam I was so determined that I will be the one accepted so I did prepare myself so much I was so disgusted that I cannot see my name when the results come out and so I can't believe it so I look at it again and then I saw the number one that I cannot read down here because I'm quite short and they put it up so I need to borrow a chair to read my name the reason that I can't see that my name is there because I'm number one on the top and I can't read it because I'm short so I got my first job as the production manager of a sewing company you know we sew clothes export so I'm managing about 200 production workers and most of my job is checking all the different managers of different departments because um, in every department like 10 towards the end of the exporting got a different manager department manager so my job is to overall check them and report to the owner the Japanese because uh, to be honest I'm not a very pass sewing machine you know <laughs> my colleagues in when we were training in japan is really fast at it my only incentives there because i learned the language so fast i adapt it i and then i start talking to the owner of the factory so i end up like an interpreter and production manager to report to her so because she can understand me and i can understand her You can see it's very traffic I just have to turn this off so I could maneuver my car then this taxi is trying to block me out life working in a factory is very stressful and very hectic the time work a work time was 7 to 3 and 3 to 11 so even though we had our training in Japan and we were glad for it but the actual work here in the Philippines is just too much I mean I have an 18-month contract with the company and 
I end up doing the whole work time because 7 to 3 manager, production manager, has resigned due to health reason. He developed cancer, so he's off because not he can be not fulfilling the contract. So I'm the one, the second the second ship manager, three to eleven supposed to be, has to do all the production management because I'm the one that's trained and all this blah 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 and they're looking still looking for someone and you end up there completing your contract doing 7 to 11 so you, I only go home I arrive home about 12 or 1 and then I have to wake up again at 5 o'clock to get back to work and after the end of the contract the last day of the contract I resign because for me why am I doing so much for someone's profit I should be the one profiting from my own effort so I already changed my goal into that again I need to do effort only where I benefit myself and so I landed immediately three days later I landed another job as sales in one of the hotels here in out uh, there in Mactan and so I was accepted due to the fact that I could speak another language and also fluency in English and I was quite happy there very relaxed and you got a lot of incentives like um, the manager of that one uh, teach me how to do some rockets you know because the Japanese cannot most of them cannot read the prices the numbers so you read it for them and then you put it up like 100 pesos become 200 pesos but I learned it from the manager and it's quite a good going for us there because it's a sales on a gift shop and the gift shop was run by the wife of the Japan Japanese owner so she herself got no clue about business and she's just having that for have something to do but we're doing everything so you know we're taking advantage of her naivety and after that I got bored with that because I can't be going on like this forever as again this is not enough you know just be a sales in somewhere so I only worked there for six months and I got the chance this big chance that billeted in that hotel are the group of the United Nations representative for Asia Pacific and they're looking for someone to represent the Philippines or to be guiding them around the Philippines when they do their mission and so I told myself I gotta have to get this job has to do everything I mean not maliciously so during the interview I told the like the head is a Jap Jap Japan is the like big sponsor of this United Nations m mission here I said you are stupid if you're not gonna hire me because look at me I'm like a vacuum for knowledge and look at me I'm young I'm dynamic I could adapt to anything that you're gonna have be training me you want me to um to learn you want me to adapt and your mission is not maybe posh to hear like oh very prestigious but actually it requires hard work and I'm willing to in give you that hard work and so I got the job I was traveling around Asia most of the country of Asia it might be prestigious to what you can hear but actually we're living in tents and in camps to serve the world health missions on medical missions dental missions and whatever mission they have our main office is in Japan so then one day they want to have 
something made for their occasion or something so I offered them I in, in turn to the beading for making togas that's when I said I made my first business exporting clothes to them you know togas because I could have them soon here in the Philippines cheaply and I sell it to them Japanese price and that's where I made a 300,000 profit first time in my life at that time I was 20 years old and so but I have no capital I only rely on the my dialogues and speeches to them so like when I got the contract for making that I would require 50% down because I cannot afford to have it made without money so when I finish it all and export it to them I want it paid and as an incentives they gave me a plane ticket to carry the whole stuff because they need it next day so there's no delay so I was able to send it to them with me carrying the whole like 10 12 boxes of togas but I only stayed there for like two days and then they sent me off and so that's my experience in working my childhood is very rough in the squatters the children there are not well behaved most is out for money and so you learn you adapt and like we will be dressed if someone's getting generous and giving us oh they're sorry for these children blah 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 we have to make sure that we're gonna make it worse we have to dress in our rags and we have to have dirty faces so the heart of these generous people will really bleed and will give us more food and after that when we have so much food some of them we just sell and use our, ourselves but that's the way it is in the urban settler and also like oh I don't have money for food I'm so hungry I haven't eaten for two days and for me now someone say that to me I'll say well I like your determination because I can't even slim down <laughs> that's how I mean I make a joke on it but I know I could tell which one are genuine which one are not I've been there and also the generous people some of them are just doing it because like right now you can see some are doing it for views at that time before there's no YouTube so you can tell that it's genuine most of it are genuine but some of them are only for their tax deduction purposes and now you have to be worried that some of this charity charity are only doing it for views because they are charity cases themselves and before they are actually rich people here in Cebu and most of them like they can deduct it from their taxes see? charity whatever they spend on their charity and so that's how my life is as a young child I already been determined to change the course of my life and have you noticed I haven't even mentioned any oh my boyfriend here because I don't even have time for boyfriends I don't even think that people will be interested with me because I came from a squatter and who will be interested in someone like me someone like from the squatter as well so that's not my type of life and so while I was working on the United Nation mission I was able to travel around of course it got so lonely in the long run and that's when I started writing to someone and I'll finish that when in the next chapter because I am now in SM the next chapter is how I meet old bee.